Hello there, this is Jay from JCAD. I make AutoCAD tutorials for interior designers and architects. And in this video, I will show you how to create this floor plan with all the information you see here. And then at the end, we will export it to a PDF document that would look just like this one here. We will start by talking about general settings, such as setting up the units and adjusting the object snap. Then we will start our drawing by adding walls, windows, and then we will add doors as well. I will talk about layers and we will use them to organize our drawing per category. We will add text elements to indicate the room names, and we will add dimensions to our exterior walls. And then finally, we will finish our drawing by adding furniture, fixtures, and equipments. And by this point, we are ready to start the print process. So we will move to layout where we will adjust the paper size and we will adjust the plot style. We will add a title block to our layout. And the title block we are using is gonna have attributes, which allows us to update the information inside the title block. Then we will proceed to printing using or the exporting to PDF using the print or plot command. And I will finish the video by talking about templates to save the settings that we did throughout the drawing and that would save us time for the next project. I will include majority of the resources I'm using in the description below the video. Additionally, this video has timestamps in the description so you can jump directly to a certain section if you prefer to. Last thing to mention, this video assumes you have no prior experience in AutoCAD. I hope you enjoy! First, let's start by opening AutoCAD. And when you start AutoCAD, uh, for the Mac version at least, you will get asked uh, which template do you want to use to start your drawing. Uh, and since I'm going to be drawing in inches and feet, I will go ahead and choose the one called ACAD LT. I'll select it and then I'll just click open. All right. So now that we have uh, AutoCAD open, there are a few things we, we need to do from the very beginning before we start doing our project. And the first thing you want to do is actually go to uh, a window called Units. Uh, and you can access it by typing U and on the keyboard and then hit the return button. And then from there, we will get this window, the drawing units. And here we only need to do one change. We need to change this uh, under length type. We need to change it from decimal to architectural. And we can leave the precision as is and all the other settings. We don't need to change them. We will just go ahead and click OK. All right, so that was the first thing is to set up the unit. The next thing you want to do is to make sure that the settings you have here on the bottom right side of the interface uh, match what I have here. So uh, so what we have here, I have this button right here. It's showing us the grid here on the background. You can keep it on or off. Uh, for now, for this video, I'll keep it on. And then the next icon you want to make sure is on. It's this one right here. It's called Polar Tracking. So you want to make sure it's showing in blue, meaning it's activated. Uh, and then the next one will be dynamic input. We would also need this one to be active. Then the next one will be another another setting uh, or drafting setting called object snap tracking. And then the next one, object snap, this one you just need to right click on it with the mouse. And then from here, go to settings. And then we will get this window and essentially, you want to have all these options uh, checked pretty much, except for tangent, nearest, and parallel. Everything else we will be mostly using uh, throughout the video. And then you can just hit OK to close this. And the last one right here, uh, this uh, setting, uh, we can turn it on or off. We won't be using anything related to this setting. So, so for now, I'll just turn it off. So these guys, need you just need to make sure they are turned on on your end. Now that we did the, the setup for AutoCAD, we are now ready to proceed with uh, drawing our floor plan pretty much. And we're gonna start by adding the 
walls, doors, and windows. Okay, so uh, in AutoCAD, there's a drawing command uh, called the polyline. You can find it here on the left side, uh, or you can type P L on the keyboard and click return to start the command. And right now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna draw the general outline of the floor plan. So what I'm gonna do here, let's start. I'm gonna start anywhere here. I'm gonna zoom out with the mouse. Using the mouse, uh, you can navigate in AutoCAD. You can zoom out in and out with the wheel. And then if you click and hold the wheel, it will allow you to uh, drag pretty much the screen around, All right? So now I'm gonna click anywhere and then I'm gonna go down. I think I'm gonna zoom a little bit more and then do start the polyline again. And then I'm gonna click here and then go down with the mouse, give direction, and I'm gonna type 31 feet, and I will put the foot symbol. Okay, so this is our first line. And then the next line I will do is for the next wall, I will, with the mouse, I'm gonna point in this direction, and I'm gonna type 14 feet. Okay, and then I'm gonna go up, and I'm gonna type four feet, and then to include inches, I will just put six, and no need to put the inch symbol here. AutoCAD understand that the first number that you type will be, uh, since it will be foot, the second number will be inches. So we can click return right now to keep going. And then I'm gonna again point with the mouse to the right side and I'm gonna type 17 feet. And then I'm gonna go up, upwards and do 24 feet. And then right now here, I forgot how much this was. Oh, I remember what we can do here, we can use this feature where we can bring the, the cursor to this point up here, and then we can drag along it. So we didn't, I didn't click there, but rather put the cursor and drag, and then we will get, then the two points where we were drawing and the point on the bottom will cross reference, and then I can just click here, and now that pretty much ma uh, matched where that point was. And here I didn't type uh, a measurement. And then I will also do the same trick or technique with this point right here. I will reference it to the right, and then click once the, both uh, both points meet, and I see the green references, the green uh, green lines references. I'll click here, and then I'll click back to the first point uh, to close the geometry, and I will click Enter to finish the command because the polyline command it keeps uh, it keeps drawing additional line segments. So. We click uh, return to finish it. And then the next thing I will do right now, I will I will use a command called offset and you can access offset by uh, typing O on the keyboard and that will start it. Or from here, from the left side, it's under the modify section and it's basically this icon right here. And what the offset does, it allows us like to give like a wall thickness, pretty much copies uh, this outline to inwards or outwards. So let's go ahead and start. Here's offset. Uh, I typed O and then I clicked return on the keyboard. And now AutoCAD is asking specify offset distance. So for the exterior wall, I'm, I'm going to actually use both. Uh, I'm going to use the same thickness for both exterior and interior walls just to make it a little simpler pretty much. So I will type six. And AutoCAD will understand by typing six, I mean inches. So this is six inches and click return. And then AutoCAD will ask me, uh, select the object to offset. So I will click on the polyline that we drew earlier. I will click on it, select it. And then you will see I need to tell AutoCAD the direction of this offset. So with the cursor, if I move it to the inside, it will show me a preview that's it's to the inside. If I put it outside, it will show it to the outside. But in this case, I will just click to the inside. I will I'll click with the mouse with the left button. And now the offset uh, is to the inside. And we have our wall thicknesses. And then to finish the command, uh, right now you can see AutoCAD is saying it's, it's asking to do offset still. So to finish the command, we will just click return on the keyboard. And now there's nothing selected, no commands active. So now let's proceed to adding our interior walls and we will also use the same drawing command we used originally, the polyline command. So polyline, P, L, and then return to start it. And then I'm gonna do a connection uh, basically from here to here, and then I'll click return. And then based on the wall thickness, I will reference it from here, this point, 
to this point. Let me zoom in so you can see. From this corner, I will track upwards and click there once it meets the other line. And then here, once it meets this line, I will click. Now we have these lines and I'll click return to finish this. Okay. And then I'm going to add some more interior walls. I'm going to use polyline. And now we're going to use the same tracking uh, feature or setting you were seeing earlier. Now I will uh, put the cursor on this corner, drag along it going downwards pretty much. Uh, and then from here, uh, once, once I reference it and move a little bit down, now I will type the dimension. I will put 9 feet and click return. And what this means, it's telling AutoCAD that we want to start the polyline nine feet away from that point. So it's referencing it, and we're able to do that by starting the drawing command, referencing the point, and then going downwards. And we're going to do that again in a second. And once we did this, I will just click to this point right here, and I'll click Return. And then I will do a similar line on the bottom, polyline, and from here I can... Uh, reference this point I put the cursor in on this corner point and I will go upwards and then I'll go a little bit up not too far away from the point and I will type nine feet okay somewhere like this all right so now that we have this uh, actually let me show you just to show you another technique to doing this you can actually use the uh, the mirror command to do the same effect where we can mirror this line based on the middle point here and reflect it to this other side. So what I will do, I'll select this line and to delete it, I can right click with the mouse and choose erase and or do like I was doing earlier, type E on the keyboard, the letter E and then click return and that will erase it. But for now, I'll just do this one. I'll select this line first and then I will start the mirror command, which is M I and you can also find it here on the left side, here's the mirror command. But you can see I'm using shortcuts and I'll be using shortcuts uh, through the entire video pretty much. Okay, and let's choose mirror. And then from here, now that the mirror command is active and our line is selected, we will tell it, uh, we, need to we need to tell AutoCAD two points pretty much that represent the mirror line. And that's what it's asking right now. It's asking us to specify the first point of mirror line. So I'll find the middle point here. And you can find the middle point. It's basically, it will be represented by a green triangle. And the reason we're able, AutoCAD is able to identify this is because of the snap settings that we did initially, uh, this one object snap. So back to the middle point, we, let's click on it and then go to the right side and click literally anywhere. And then we will get this question from AutoCAD if we want to erase the source objects, meaning if we want to delete the line that we use to mirror. So we will say no because we want to keep both of them. All right. So now, now that we have this, what I also want to do, let's copy. Let's actually copy this line down. I think we, we need to do one more copy here. So copy down and let's do 30 inches. Okay, and then the same for the line on the bottom. I will use the copy command, which you can access by typing CO on the keyboard. And you can find it on the left side. From here under modify, this is the copy command. So let's do copy. And the way the copy command works, we're just going to click on one point and then give direction. And then we're going to type the distance. So I'm going to type 30 here. All right, so now that we have this, now I will go ahead and give like the line thicknesses. Actually, before I do that, let me just mark one more line. I will do a polyline. And from this corner point, I will reference to the right side, similar to what we did earlier. And I will just type uh, here, let's do, let's do four feet. So I can type four feet or I can type 48. AutoCAD will understand that 48 Inches is four feet if you want to type either or AutoCAD will understand both values using using the foot symbol or without it using inches. So click return. And now the line started four feet away from that point. And then I'll go up like this. And then now I will use the referencing uh, technique and I will go down. Actually, let's not go down. Let's actually, uh, let me show you something else here. I'll select this line that I just created 
And then when it's selected and no command is active, you can actually uh, click on one of the control points that we see here. These blue points are called vertex. Uh, I like to call them control points. And what you can do with them, you can actually click on the point and drag, and that will allow you to stretch it pretty much. So I just wanted to stretch it all the way down to the bottom. And you will see in a second what I'm trying to draw here. This space will be a bedroom, a bedroom, and here will be a bathroom. We will have a closet here and a closet for the other bedroom. So let's do, let's do first, let's use a, a different command right now. It's called the trim command, TR. Uh, TR is the shortcut for it, and you can find it uh, from the left side right here. Uh, it looks like a scissor, and it's trying to cut the line. Uh, trim command is one of the nicest commands in AutoCAD. It allows you to quickly clean clean your lines pretty much. And here's how it works. I will start it, and then what I will do, I will click on this line, and it will get rid of it pretty much. And then I will click on this line right here, and it will get rid of it as well. Uh, since I'm using AutoCAD 2021, they updated the trim command, so it does it works right away. In case you're using an older version of AutoCAD and you're watching this video, you just need to click double click return when you use the trim. All right. So uh, for it to to function pretty much the same way I showed you right now. All right. So the trim command will keep going. You can see AutoCAD is still uh, still has the command active, so we will click return to finish it pretty much. And now we want to give the wall thicknesses to uh, everything we just drew. So I will use offset. Uh, again, the same command we used earlier to give the wall, the exterior wall thickness. And it's asking us for the offset distance, specify offset distance. We will say six inches as well. And then this one, I'll bring it down. And this one, I'll bring it up. And then this one, I'll bring it to the left. And this one down. And this one upwards. And then just to verify what uh, what I've done so far, I'm not sure if this is big enough of a closet or this bathroom is big enough. So what I will use, I will use uh, a measuring tool here uh, and to access the measuring tool, I think it was under uh, modify, I guess not, or is it under tools, sorry, under the tools tab on the top, on the top of your interface. And then from here under tools, you want to go to inquiry and then you want to choose distance. Okay, and then from here, I want to see how big how big this room is. So from here to here, I'll click on that point and then this point, and it's showing me that this is nine feet. Okay, and let's click on distance. This will restart the command, and let's zoom in. Let's click on here. This is two feet closet. This is good. I'm happy with that. And then let's do distance again. Mm -hmm. Click on this point to this point, and the bathroom will be six feet wide. I'm happy with that as well. Let's just check how deep the bathroom is. Let's see from here to here. Eight feet, six inches. I think this is pretty spacious, so this is pretty good. So now I can just click on the exit option on the bottom, and that will stop the measuring command. All right. So now let's use the trim command again to clean out everything that, uh, to clean out like where all the walls meet. Mm -hmm. And actually, we want to do an opening here. We don't want to keep this wall like this. So... Uh, let's do let's do this first. Let's select this line first and stretch it outwards and then I'll click uh, escape to deselect it. I'll click escape and then this one the same I will click on it uh, on this point and stretch it outwards just to define this opening that we want to cut from this wall pretty much. I don't want to have this uh, segment uh, closed pretty much. All right and then let's start the trim command again. So trim tr and click return. And then I will, this time, I, I was showing you earlier, I can click on each line, or I'll show you a different way. I'll click on one point, and then click on a different point, and it will cut through all of them. And the same, I will use the same technique. I'll click here, and go all the way like this, and it will cut all these lines that are meeting. And I will do the same on this one right here. And then on the top, I will do, I'll click here, and then going downwards, all the way down. That way I cleaned all where all the, the, the walls uh, meet pretty much. And then I'll click on the small ones. And since we're doing that, let's, uh, let's go ahead and clean all the small segments over here. All right. And I will click return to finish the trim command. 
So now we have the general outline of the, the walls, both exterior and interior, and we are ready to proceed to putting uh, doors and windows on this floor plan. Okay, so uh, windows and doors are opening. So what I, the way I like to do it usually is to first uh, place all the openings everywhere. Uh, and then afterwards, I would add lines that represent windows and add uh, something called the blocks to represent the doors. So let's mark now the openings on this plan. First of all, let's look at the entrance. I want to put the entrance over on this side. So I will use polyline to mark it. So polyline, I will reference this point, this corner point, drag along to the right side. And I will say, let's do two feet. Okay, and then go up and click enter to finish the uh, to finish the polyline command. And then I will select this small line that I that I created, and then I will copy it, and I'll copy it to the right side. Let's do five feet. I'm making it a little wide because I want the entrance to be a double door on this side here. All right. So and then on this side here, I'm planning to have the kitchen here uh, on this area. So I want to put uh, a window for the sink. So let's mark a, uh, a window above the sink and let's do, I'm not sure exactly where it will land, but uh, for now, let's just go from this line on the inside, reference it, and I will do uh, four, let's do, let's do three feet. Okay, and I'll go down and click enter or return, sorry. And then I will select the small line that I created and I will copy it. I'll tell it to start from this point and then go to the left side and I'll tell it to go as wide as three feet. Okay, I think this is pretty good. So far, so good. Okay, and then along this wall right here, um, I'm not going to have windows here. Let's go upwards. This area, I will put the living area pretty much. So I will add I will add a couple of windows here. So let's do polyline again, PL, and click return to start it. And then this corner point, I will reference it going down. Let's do two feet. And then return it to here. And then I can copy this down, or if you want, we can also use the offset command to, to do to, to do the offset. The offset will do a similar effect to the copy command. So here's offset. And then we need to tell it the distance. I'm going to make these windows a little wider, so I'll do four feet. I'll click on this and click uh, re click, uh, click on there, and then click return now to finish it. And then I think I want to add another window below it. So what I will do, I will do a copy by reference. So I will do another four feet window, but two feet away from this opening that I'm creating here. So I will do copy, and based on this point, I'm doing the copy based on a point, I would like a point away from the object we're, we're using. So based on this point, and then I'll click on this point, and this is like copy by reference kind of technique, okay? And then the copy command will keep on going, so I'll click return to finish it. All right, so now we have this. And then here on this uh, wall up here, I want to do like a sliding, a very wide sliding door. Uh, so let's do a polyline from the middle point from here and go up and this one then I will offset it one time to the right four feet and one time to the left I'll click on it again and go to the left and now we have like this uh, these two lines and I will delete the one in the center all right and then here let's add let's add some some let's add actually let's add the doors openings for for the bedroom here, for the bathroom and the and the bedroom on the bottom. So let's do polyline. The same technique. We're gonna we're gonna reference the corners. We're gonna reference here. Let's actually reference the I prefer to do from this corner. Let's do four inches and then go up. And then I will do offset and I will tell it to offset 32 inch. This is kinda the standard in California to have the doors at 32 inches for the interior. And then I will select these two lines that I created, and then I will copy them upwards from this wall. I'll copy from this point all the way up there to this point. I'll click again with the mouse, and that marks the door opening for the other bedroom. And I'll click return to finish the copy. And now for the bathroom, 
we'll do something similar polyline let's do four inches away you want to give enough spacing for the door to open and then let's copy this line down like i mentioned 32 inches the standard and click return all right so what else do we have here we need to add a little bit more windows on this bedroom and maybe uh, a window or two on this for this bedroom oh and we still have the uh, the sliding doors let's do the windows first let's do a window here in the middle of this wall i'll do a polyline click here to here and then offset this two feet to the right and two feet to the left and that will mark like a total four feet pretty much click return and delete this reference line that we drew and then again polyline from the middle point here to here and then let's do offset actually let's do copy this time uh, i'm gonna try to show you different commands as we go through so i'll click here and go upwards i'll go two feet and then with the mouse the copy command is still active i'll go down and do two feet again for the same line segment and then click return again to finish the command and then choose this reference line and delete it and what we can do right now, if I want to add similar windows to the bedroom above, you can actually select these segments here uh, that we created. You can, you can click on them like this, one by one, or we can do like a window selection. I will click escape to deselect them. Uh, in AutoCAD, I, uh, I should have mentioned this earlier, but in AutoCAD, there's a there's two kinds of selection. When you click on the mouse without holding, don't hold the mouse when you're selecting an AutoCAD. Uh, when you click and not hold, you will get a window selection. And there's a blue one and a green one. The difference between the, the, the blue and the green, you get the blue when you click from the left and you go to the right. And if you go to the left, you will get the green one. Uh, the blue one will select all the objects that are included inside the window. So if I do a window selection here, only that small line will be selected. Uh, the green window, on the other hand, it will select anything that it touch. So if I do a green window from here to here, you will see it's literally selecting the entire outline of the exterior wall and the interior outline of this interior wall. So, um, so that's how the green and the blue window work pretty much. Okay, so I'll click Escape now to deselect everything. Or you can right click with the mouse and then you can choose deselect all. Again, I'm trying to show you different ways to do different things in AutoCAD. And now using the blue selection window, I'll select these two guys and another blue selection window like this and select the, these. Okay. And then here, what we want to do is do a mirror. So I want to mirror these windows from the bottom bedroom to the top bedroom. And I will use the middle point. Uh, that we use initially to create like the different walls for this bedroom and then go to the right and that will mark them up there we'll make a copy of them and then autocad is asking me if i want to erase uh, and not in this case we want to keep the windows we created so far so so far so good we created the, the majority of the openings we want to have on this floor plan now let's add the openings for uh these um uh, for these uh uh, closets pretty much so let's do polyline again you can see that polyline literally is a tool you'll be using all the time and let's do here let's do six inches and then let's select it and then copy to the left let's do i think let's do six feet let's make it pretty wide to take advantage of how big it is and i'll click enter I think we can go some more. I'll select this line and I will use the move command. And the move command is with M or you can have it over here. This is the icon. So I'll, uh, I'll click on it to start it. And the way it works is very simple. It's similar to copy and the other commands we you saw earlier. We select the object first and now we're going to tell it the base point from where it's going to start. And then we give direction with the mouse. And then I'm going to type the distance. I will type uh, 12 12 inches or i can type one foot the same autocad will understand both all right and then i will select both of these lines and i will copy them from this bedroom to the bedroom to the bottom and i'm using copy by reference 
similar to how we did it earlier. And I'll click return. Uh, now technically you can draw all the different openings here on this bedroom and then select all of them and mirror them to this bedroom. That would save you uh, some time. All right. So um, just, to, just to give you a tip. All right. So now we have literally all the openings marked on the plan. Like we have lines that show us where they are. And so what we will do now, we will actually cut them. We're going to cut them or trim them using the trim, trim tool. So here's trim. Let's do trim PR and click return. And then here, let's, we, can, we can click on each line one by one. Or like I showed you earlier, you can click on one point and go to the second point and click and it will click it will cut everything through that path pretty much so i'll click here and here and then here and here then click from here to here and then these guys i can actually cut all of them together since they're aligned together and then the same for this one literally like this and this one here here this is one more window and i think perfect so now we have everything uh, everything all the openings are like are obvious now we cut them and they are literally open so i'll click return to to finish the trim command all right and here now what we will do we will the next step we will do is we will select everything that we we did so far i'll select all of them and then i will do a command called join uh, and the, the shortcut for it is the letter j and what it will do, I will show you before I start it, I'll click escape to cancel the command. Uh, basically, because of the way we did everything, some of the lines we created were not like uh, connected to other lines. And the way I like to work in AutoCAD, I like all the lines that I work with are to be connected. So for example, you see, this is a line on its own, this one in its, on its own, this one is on its own. Uh, so I prefer them to be all all joined together, and you will see later when we put the hatch to represent the the walls. Uh, it's much better if all of these guys are joined together. So let's do a big selection to select everything together, like this, and then let's type J to do the join command and click return. And now everything is joined together, and we can verify. The same lines that were disconnected earlier. Let's click here. Now they are joined together. I think this one didn't work. Let's select them and do join. Okay, now this is working. Oh, this one didn't work too. So let's tell them to join. Okay, perfect. So this is like uh, all of these uh, walls or these lines that represent the walls are like almost one object pretty much. And the same here, the same here, this one, this one, this one, this one. And this one, I'm just doing a quick verification like this. Perfect. So now I know all of them are are like connected lines pretty much. All right. So now the next step will be to start adding the doors and the windows. And let's start by adding the windows and then I'll show you how to add the doors. So let's do the windows. Let's We're going to use the rectangle command to do the windows. So I will type R. E C, uh, and that's the shortcut for the rectangle command. You can also find rectangle up here in the drawing area, and it's this icon pretty much. So let's click here, okay, and we start the command. And the way it works is very simple. Uh, for rectangle, you just click on one corner, and here's the other corner, and then I'll click. Uh, now, if I want to restart the command immediately, because rectangle, the way it works, it does it one time and then it stops so to restart the last command we did you can just click return on the keyboard and that will restart literally the last command so now that the uh, rectangle is started again now i can click here to here and i can click return to start it again click here to here return and then you can also right click with the mouse and you can choose repeat rectangle you can see it's showing you so i'll click on that like this, and one more repeat, and then repeat. And everything that I marked right now with the rectangle, these are windows, and everything else that's left, these are doors. And I just realized we don't have a window for the bathroom, so let's go ahead and add it. Here's a polyline from here to here, 
then let's do offset let's do 18 inches to the right I don't think the command started let me click escape okay and then offset the letter O and return and then now let's do distance of 18 inches click on the line click upwards click on the line again and go downwards and click return to finish it and then let's delete this line and then let's trim it like this and then let's join everything that we just created just so we had clean lines here's join and now let's do window now let's do mark the window with a rectangle and then click right here now earlier you saw like we did have the similar look but this is uh, we're not done yet you will see later on why am i doing uh this the way i'm doing it all right so now we have all the windows marked so now let's just add a simple line in the middle of the rectangle for each window just to represent the glazing and just to differentiate it from the walls so i'll click return to finish polyline here let's repeat polyline from this middle point to this middle point and click enter to finish the command and then right click repeat from here to here and then enter to finish it then repeat and then let's see here how many windows we have left here's another one and here's one more and click return I'll, I'll use the keyboard this time I'm hitting return quickly to start the command and then clicking hitting return uh, to finish the command all right so now all our windows are marked and they're drawn and now we are ready to proceed to adding the doors in this drawing so the doors in AutoCAD I'll show you I want to show you first how to draw them first and then we will we will move to using blocks pretty much for them so let me just uh, pan the screen a little bit away from here uh, just to this empty area and I'm doing this pan or this handle I'm doing it with the wheel on the mouse I'm clicking holding it and this allows us to drag the screen around you can also right click and then choose pan and that will activate it if you're using a trackpad on on your laptop or your Mac uh, that will that might that will definitely be helpful so let's click exit to, to finish it okay so to do a door let me show you doing the swing door first so here we will do we will use a polyline similar to how we did before and then let's do let's start it and then let's do let's say we want to do a door for these openings right here okay so i will start here i will give it the thickness of one and a half okay and then maybe two inches is better but for now just something simple and then this door is going to be 32 inches and then again i will do one and a half and then I will go back to the first point where I started and I will click there and I'll click return to finish the polyline so this is just to represent like the door panel pretty much and then to represent the swing arc right here on this side usually the way I like to do it is using a circle uh, I will start to start the circle uh, I did this pretty quick let me redo it again so circle is the letter C and now I can click here to start it or you can start it from here uh, on the left side of the interface so circle I'll click here and the way the circle command works in AutoCAD you will need first to choose the center point of the circle and then choose the radius so I will tell the center of the circle to be at this point and then I will tell it the radius to be as much as to this point and I'll click here and then I will just do a reference line here with the polyline from this point to somewhere here and then I will use the trim command and then I will trim this arc outside okay and I'll click return and then I will delete this reference line that I use it was just to mark where the 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 cut should happen so now we have something like this and then this door we can uh, or just these lines pretty much this polyline and arc we can just select them and move them and put them here uh, but to make it a little easier we can block these elements together we can make them like a, a group that has a name uh, and that is called a block in AutoCAD and to do a block in AutoCAD you can simply just do the use the letter B to start the command and then we from this window we will need to do uh, two main things we want to give a name so I will say this is a test door 
And then we need to tell this door where it's going to be the control point for this block. So see right here where it says base point, we need to uh, choose pick point. And then now I will choose the swinging point. And then now that we did the name and we picked the base point, we can go ahead and create the block. And then when I select this again, you will see these elements are together and they only have one control point and they're all highlighted. And then I can move this from this uh, insertion point or this base point that I used and then place it here. And then I can copy it and place it here as well. All right. But the, the rather than doing this and drawing this door from scratch, AutoCAD actually has a library of blocks that comes with it and that you can use. And they have a really cool door block. So to access the blocks library in AutoCAD, on the right side of the interface, see right here on the top, it says there's layers. Uh, and then to the next tab, there's something called, let's click, okay, got it. So we can click on this and this is the reference manager. And the last one here is blocks. And under blocks right here, you can see that actually on your end, it will probably be something, it will look something like this. You, when you click on blocks, it will be looking on this tab, which is showing us the blocks in the current drawing. So what you need to do is to switch to the next, the last icon on the right side and choose block libraries. Right now I have uh, this library open, JCAD. I will switch to another one. Let's switch to Architectural Imperial. And this is the library that comes with AutoCAD. And then from here, see there's a, there's a door block here. So let's right click on it and then choose insert in drawing. And then I'm gonna click, drag and place it. Uh, usually I like to place it somewhere outside and then I like to drag it to place. Now, what's cool about this block is that if I'm going to select it first, when you select it, you see there's a lot of controls on it. Uh, and these controls allow you to do different things. For example, if I click here, I can control the swing. So I can choose, uh, I can tell it to be open as much as 90 degrees. I think it didn't select it. Let me do it again. Okay, here we go. All right, and beside that, the feature that I really like is this one right here. If I click on this arrow, I can switch the uh, the 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 size or the width of the door, and it has a standard door width pretty much. Okay, so you can see if I stop at this point, it will give us uh, 32 inches or two feet eight inches. So this is matching the opening we have in here. So this is the one I will be using. I'll actually get rid of this one. Then I will move it with the move command, and then I'll tell it to move based on the rotation point from here, and I'll place it there. Then I'll select it, and then I will tell this to go to the inside, and I'll flip its direction using this arrow. And then I just need to move it a little bit more to the inside to align with the wall. All right, and then I will select it, I'll copy it, and I'll copy it. Let's do here. Let's move it, let's flip it outside, and then I'll move it inside with the move command. Okay, and then one more copy. Actually, we can, yeah, actually, let's just keep copying. So let's copy one here, and we will need one here. And then over here on this side and these closet doors, we'll just do uh, a sliding door pretty much. Okay, so let's do this one. This is an easy one. I'll move it from here to here. And I think this door, I made the opening total five feet. Again, I'll remind you how to do the measuring from the uh, from the top, from uh, from dimension, or oh, tools, sorry. And then inquiry. And then here we choose distance. And I just want to double check how big did I do this opening? Five feet. I'll click escape to stop the command. So that means this door should be two feet six. And then using the mirror command, I'll click, I will start the mirror command and I'll click from here, going upwards, and that gives us this door. Okay, and then let's do the bathroom door. But here we're gonna have to use the rotate command and to, to rotate this door, select it first and then start the rotate command by typing RO and you can find the rotate command here in the modify section on the left side and it's this icon right here. So let's choose rotate and then on the on this on this corner point, let's click here and then let's go. Uh, let's go. Let's move the mouse away from that point and then I will go up 
And then when I move the mouse up, we will see this green reference line, meaning that this is going straight and the rotation works. You can also, you can also let me do undo here to do undo. You can just click on this arrow right here. Okay, and then I'll select it. You can do the rotation command and then just tell it to rotate by 90 degrees and that will do the trick as well. And then we move it from this corner point to here. And that was that was about using uh, this door block and this uh, uh, and this block, by the way, I just want to mention one more thing. Uh, that this block is a special kind of block. It's called a dynamic block, and that's because of all the controls it has on it. AutoCAD has some of them uh, already that comes with the software, and I'll show you later some of the blocks that I created myself. All right. So now let's move to adding the sliding doors for for the closet area and for uh, this area to the outdoor area. So let's look here. Let's do a quick. Um, Let's check how wide is this. So let's use tools. Let's click on tools, inquiry, distance. And this is seven feet wide. So what I will do, I will do two door panels. I will use polyline and they have to be like half that distance. So half of seven feet is a three feet, six inches. And let's do, let's do one and a half thick panel. I think I did this wrong. Let me do undo. Okay, let's click escape. This didn't work. I'll select this and delete it. I can do the erase button or I can click delete on the keyboard. So polyline again. So let's do this three feet, six inches, and then one and a half thick. And then let's reference the first point and go down and click here and click return to finish it okay and then this polyline i will just move it from this corner to this corner and then i'll select it again and move it from this corner to this corner and then i'll make a copy of it i'll copy and let's go from here to here and click return okay and then let's select this and then i will do move and I'll just move it. I don't want to show the door fully, the sliding door fully close. So I'll just do here to here. Okay, just to kind of do a little bit of presentation, make it understandable. Okay, and then now that these two guys are created and they are matching the other bedroom, I'll just copy them from one of the corner points here. I'll tell it to copy from this point to this point and click return. And if you want to flip their direction, we can just do mirror. And we do a mirror based on this middle point. Oh, that's not gonna work actually. We can we can do the flipping. Uh, we can just literally move them. Again, it's not necessary to change it, but I, I'm just trying to show you different commands. Okay, and now let's do the same for this guy for this opening over here. Uh, let's verify the opening with using inquiry and distance. Let's click here to here, and this one is a little wider, so. Uh, it's eight feet so i'll just use one of these door panels that i that i already created and i'll copy it from here to this corner right here and click return now this one that i did earlier it's a three feet six and to adjust it quickly i can literally uh, select it and then by clicking on this control point over here and going to the left i can stretch it uh, by six inches Okay, and then this point I can stretch it. They should have been connected and moved together, but it didn't work in this case. Um, but anyway, once you stretch that, uh, here we now have uh, a door that's four feet, that's half this opening, and then I'll copy it similar to the way we did. But this time I'll show you a technique rather than copy down uh, from here to here and then move it to the left. I'll just copy it directly from this corner point to the middle point over here and that gives us the same kind of effect and I'll hit enter so now we have all the walls doors and windows now we will move to adding layers to our drawing here and layers in AutoCAD pretty much allow us to control the properties of geometry properties such as the line weight and the line type Okay, 
And to add layers in AutoCAD, you um, we'll go to the Layers tab over here. And then from here to create a new one, we will click on this icon to make a new layer. And this one, I will just call it uh, Walls for now. And then if you want to change the settings, we can change the color from here. We can make it green. And then from here, if we want to change the line weight, we will just tell it from default to make it as thick as 35. And then the line type, we will leave it as continuous. Now, technically, we should add different layers for to, to categorize like the different elements we have in the drawing. So walls, for example, should all be sitting on the walls layer and the doors and the windows should have their own layers as well. So just to save time, I already created a file uh, earlier with all the layers we will be using. And it's right here. So what I will do here, I will just select all of them. And then right click and do copy, do clipboard, copy. And then go back to our drawing and then right click. And then let's do paste. Okay, and I'll just put them somewhere a little bit far away from the uh, drawing. Uh, and I will leave you I will leave you a link in the description box below the video on how to wh what are the settings that I use for these layers and also if you'd like to get them you can get them as well from the Patreon page. All right. So now that we now that we have the layers here that I transferred them from this file to our drawing here, uh, what we will do now we have them all loaded on the right side. You can see. Let's expand this list a little bit. I will click on properties here so we can see. All right, awesome. So the original layer that uh, that I used for walls, this one, uh, we can leave it. But for now, what I will do, I will select all the walls that we have. And since we joined them earlier, it will be easier to select them this way. All right. And then I will change their layer uh, from the properties window on the bottom. I can change it from here, from layer zero, which is the default layer in AutoCAD to walls. And, and then I'll just click escape. Or we can change the layers from a different location from the layers window itself. So now I'm selecting all the windows. We will also move them to their own layer as well. So windows. And then lastly, doors, just select all of them. And then from here, let's do doors. All right, and that's, that's about these layers for now. To add room names in AutoCAD, we will use the text command. Uh, you can access the text command from the left side over here. When you look at this section, all of these commands on the left side are related to uh, text pretty much. Uh, and also, uh, basically, you can actually click on this particular icon to start the text command. Or using shortcuts, you can type the letter T and then click return. And that will start the text command. Now, the, the, the way the text command works is basically we need to draw a rectangle representing the dialog box. So this is how it works. Let's say, let's do it here. So you would just click once and then click again, and that will open the dialog box for this text pretty much. And then here we will type bed, bedroom, for example, one. All right. And then to close this text or to finish the command, you can click on the save button up here, or you can click outside the dialog box. All right. And now you see like the text almost disappeared, but it doesn't disappear. It's actually very small. And if we zoom in, you will see like it's very tiny compared to our floor plan. And obviously that's not going to work. So to change the text size, we need to do that from a window or uh, a setting called the text style manager. So to access that window or to access the settings of the text, we can either click here on this icon text style, or we can go to the format window up here and then choose text style. And it will open this uh, window, which is basically the manager for the text styles. Now AutoCAD by default um, has uh, a style called standard. And the standard one, like really it doesn't work. It comes in very small 
and you always have to change it to a proper size for the text all right so from here you can choose the standard and then you can choose the text size or the text height and change it to something that might work for example six inches and i'll hit apply and close and it didn't change the text we will need to create a new text element right here and then it will show it properly all right and then i can expand this to make it fit and here we go all right however to make sure i'm using the right text size i will actually get rid of these guys and i will use uh, text styles that i created before and the text styles i created are standard text styles so um, they have the proper text size depending on the scale of the drawing and let me let me explain this a little bit so i'll go here to this file that i opened and from here you will see i have multiple text elements uh, with different sizes and as you can see uh, these guys like uh, I noted on them pretty much which scale they they work with so let's say you are working on a drawing that you're gonna put on three quarters uh, three quarters of scale so you would need to use this text element with with that floor plan or that drawing so depending on the depending on the scale of your drawing later on when you print it uh, you will need to use uh, a proper text styles okay now the easy way to deal with these uh, with these text is just to select all of them and then I'll right click go to clipboard copy and go back to our project and place them close to the layers so I'll right click clipboard and then I'll do paste and by the way uh, I forgot to mention that these layers are also standard layers that uh, architects and interior designers work and use uh, the terminology might be a little bit different and the colors might be different but for the most part uh, the settings and the naming like mostly is understood and used by a lot of uh, interior designers and architects so um, I recommend using them uh, in your project all right so this floor plan or this drawing that we're doing I will, I'm planning to print it on a quarter inch scale if you notice the scale for our drawing, we were drawing everything to true scale. So when we drew a door here, 32 inches, we actually drew 32 inches. The scaling in AutoCAD happens later on, as I will show you when we get to printing pretty much. All right. So uh, since I plan to put this on a quarter inch scale, I will go ahead and choose the text style that work for, for that. And here we go. And I will, I can just copy it no need to use the original and I'll just drop it somewhere here and I'll click return all right and then I will select it and to edit the text you can do uh, you can do text edit by typing te and that will show you this command and I'll click enter and that will activate it or another way is to just double click on the text and that will allow you to also update or edit this text and now I'll change this to say bedroom one for example and i'll select all our text and i'll just tell it to be in the middle and click outside and then move it a little bit here to the right all right and one last thing i will do i will select this text and then from here from the properties window let me see it's not visible here so we will need to go to customize my properties from here to see an option that's not visible by default let me just expand this a little bit so we can see and let's go down so on the bottom I don't see this option here we go text to frame so I will click on here that way it will show me the setting for for this text to be able to add a frame around it uh, AutoCAD for Mac by default doesn't show all the all the settings or properties for elements so for Mac users, you will just need to click on this button right here, the customization button, and activate something if you don't see it. For Windows users, this one is already available in properties. You can just locate it in the properties window. So here, I'll just uh, click on text frame, and that gives us a frame for our text. And I'll resize it a little bit and move it a little bit to the center. And then I will move it to the proper layer. I'll change its layer. I can do that from the properties. Switch it here to ID. Let's see which one we're going to use. 
we're going to use text since this is a text element. All right. And then I will select this text and copy it. Here's another bedroom. I'll drop a copy of a text here, one for here, one for here. Uh, and we can add just a simple text to say closet. Okay. So this is bedroom. I will do text edit or I'll, this is the shortcut. I, you can just double click on it as well. Right. And then this one here, double click, select everything and switch it to closet. And then this one, I'll double click, switch it to bathroom. And then this one, the same, this will be a living room. And here we can just say kitchen, right? And then this closet text, I will move it a little bit down and then I will copy it to the next closet as well. And now it's, uh, it's time to add dimensions to our drawing. And to do that, we will use uh, a command called dimension linear, which can be found in this area right here. And as you can see, uh, this area has a collection of dimension commands. Uh, and the one we're going to use in particular is this one right here, dimension linear. So let's click on it. And then the way the dimension command work is pretty simple. We just need to click on one point and then another point. And then we need to move the cursor away from the line to place the dimension uh, element pretty much. So I'll click, I'll, I'll just click somewhere here. Now, when we look at this, it just doesn't look right. We can't tell uh, what is this uh, value pretty much or what's the unit of this. It's saying 288, but we can't tell if it's inches or feet or if it's using something metric. Also, the arrow here on the dimension is very small. And also on this corner, the dimension is very, very close to the line of the wall. So we will need to modify this. And to modify it, we will need to go to something called the dimension style manager. Uh, exactly like we did with text, uh, the dimensions also have uh, a style and a style manager. And to access it, we can access the style man the dimension style manager from this icon right here. Or if we go to the format menu on the top and then go down and you will see there's dimension style. And then from here, you see the default in AutoCAD is standard but it's not gonna work, we will need to modify it. And to modify it, open it from here and then click here and modify. And there's several, there's several uh, settings to change about the dimension. But to save time uh, and keep going with this, I will use my own dimension styles that I created earlier. All right, so I'll go here to this file and then I will select all of them and then I'll right click just like we did with text. I'll do copy and then right click and then go back, sorry, to our drawing. And then here I'll do right click clipboard and I will paste it uh, somewhere here. Right. And just like text, the, the, the dimension styles that I created are also uh, standard in the US. Uh, architects and interior designers use uh, these particular settings and also, I'm providing you these dimension styles. I'm providing you, if you want to download them for free, uh, the link will be in the description box. Same for the text styles as well. All right, so let's look in here and let's locate it. You will see here I left you a text that says what each dimension style, uh, what scale does it work with? So our drawing is going to be in quarter inches scale. So it's right here. So I will need to use uh, this dimension pretty much or this dimension style. So this one, let's click on it and let's see what it's called. I'm going to select it. And then from the properties, you can see here, it's telling us what's the dimension style name and it's called JC-048. So we will, I'll just click escape here to deselect it. And then here from the properties window on the right side, I will go to dimension style and I will switch to JC-048. And that's the one that's used for the quarter inch scale. All right. And then this one, I can delete it or select it and modify it uh, to have the right uh, dimension style. But for now, I will get rid of it. Actually, I will just hit the delete button on the keyboard. Or you can right click and do erase. All right. 
So let's see. So we switched right now the current dimension style that we will be using. So now we can just go to dimension linear. All right, and I'm just gonna do the overalls here, the overall of this uh, plan pretty much. So I'll click on this point and I'll click on this point here and then drag down. Okay. And then I, c I will need to restart the dimension command or I can right click and choose repeat. And then click again here to here and then align it kind of with this dimension that we have here. And then I can right click and do repeat and do from here to the very bottom and go out. And now I'm going to use actually enter. It will be just much faster to do that. So enter to repeat the command. I'll click from here to the center of this window. Feel free to do it, uh, to do it from the edges of the window, but I'm just going to do from the center of each window here. Okay, and I'm snapping to this point. Click return one more time and up to here, to here. And then I will do the same on the other side. Click enter or return, sorry, to repeat the command. And then let me do an overall from this point to this point. This overall is unnecessary. Actually, it is necessary because we don't have it on the bottom. And then here, let's say we want to show this one how much it is. So this is 2, 6. And then enter to here. And then I think we will just need this dimension. All right. So now all these uh, all these dimension elements we technically need to put them on their own layer. So I'll select all of them like this with big green selection windows. And then from the properties window, we will switch them to uh let's see to the dimensions layer. ID dims. And now we have the dimensions as well. I can add the rest of the windows and be much more detailed with this, but I think you already got the general idea of how to use the dimension and the dimension style. The last thing to add to our drawing is basically furniture elements, fixtures, and equipments. Now we can draw everything from scratch or use blocks. However, most likely you will have to do both pretty much. For the simple elements like tables and countertops, you would just draw them yourselves. And for the more complicated elements uh, like uh, bathroom fixtures or, or kitchen equipment, you would like it's better to use blocks, find the blocks and use them. It will be much easier uh, to use and it would save you time. All right. So now let's see, looking at this floor plan. Let's see, let's decide where we want to start. I'm going to I'm going to start adding everything from the bedrooms and then I'll move to the bathroom, then living room and then we will wrap up in the kitchen area, all right? Now, looking at this, the room names, the text elements that represent the room names, it's kind of in the way, uh, it's kind of in our way uh, for us to draw everything. So what I will do from the layers list, I will uh, select the text layer and I will hide the text. So from here on the right side, I will go in the list, go up, here we go, here's text. And then from the left side, I will click on this button to make it invisible. Or I can click on the right side and make it uh, freeze it pretty much. And that will give us uh, the same effect pretty much. And now we can proceed to working on the bedroom. Now, before we start to drawing any of the elements, I will also switch our current layer from the zero layer. I'll switch it to the furniture layer. So. On the right side, I can switch the layer from the top, uh, from the layers window, and here click on this list and then switch to furniture. Or from the bottom, from the properties window, I can select here and switch the layer to furniture. Either or, uh, that works. That way, whatever we're drawing, it will all go to the correct layer pretty much. So here in the bedroom, let's focus on it. I will add a desk first here in the corner. And I will use a polyline for that. Okay, and I'll click on this corner, then I'll go to the left side. Let's go maybe 30 inches. Maybe that's a little, so that's not that much. I'll do undo. So let's do three feet. Okay, even not that much. Let's do 42 instead. 
and then I will do 24. And then here, let's do, what was the total? 24. Let's do now uh, one foot, six inches. And then now I will go, I'll go to the bottom, three feet. Okay, and then I'll click here and then I'll close the, poly, uh, the polyline back. So now we have that. Now I want to add a, a desk chair to, uh, to this desk. And for that, I will use a block instead of drawing it from scratch. And to add a chair, I'll use a block and from the blocks library. And to access the library, we will go to the right side. And then on the top, there's the layers. And then on the far right side, there's blocks. And then here, you want to make sure you are selecting the block libraries. All right. And... Uh, I showed you this earlier when we were inserting the doors on this floor plan. I showed you how we use this door from this particular library. It's called Architectural Imperial. And this library comes with AutoCAD. However, this library doesn't have uh, a chair block that I can use. So uh, what I did, I actually loaded uh, my own libraries of different elements. And I will be using that throughout uh, working with this floor plan. I also am going to include a link in the description box so you can get some of these blocks for free. All right. So now let's choose the bedroom. Then from here, oh, this is for the beds. What I want to do is first the seating. Then I'm going to go through this list of chairs. Let's see, I want one, I want something like this. I will right click on it on this block and choose insert in drawing. And then I will drop it here somewhere and then I will rotate it I'll do the rotation kind of from the middle and here we go we have this uh, chair beside the desk now I'm gonna add a bit so for that we will go back to the uh, blocks uh, from the libraries list and then I'll click here and I'll switch to GC bedroom and from here I have these beds and then uh, I can use any of these guys. The, there's one that I want to show you. It's this one, Bed Plan Dynamic. I'm going to right click on it and choose Insert in Drawing. The reason I want to use this one because I want to show you a feature in AutoCAD about the blocks. Some of the blocks uh, in AutoCAD can be dynamic. And we saw that in the door earlier when we selected where you can do a lot of different things with the block. You can stretch it. You can change the direction of the door, the swing direction. Uh, and also like how open it is. Now the same here, I made this uh, bed block pretty much. And what it has, if you click on it, select it, uh, you will see that it has this arrow that allows us to switch between the different bed sizes. Okay, so I will just choose queen and it will show us a different bed uh, in that block. And then I will just rotate it from here and then move it from here, kind of under, right under the window over here. All right, so now we have that. Now I will add nightstands. Nightstands, I will just draw from scratch. I'll use polyline. And now we'll do, let's see, one foot by one foot, and then another one foot, and then close the geometry back. Okay, and then I will move this polyline. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna move it from this corner to the corner of the bed. Then move it away by, let's see, maybe four inches. And then move it away from the wall, maybe just by two inches. All right. And then I will add a lamp here. Uh, I do have an electrical library. I don't think I have it added here. It's not these ones. These won't work. Let's see. Yeah, we can just draw it ourselves. So I'll just switch back to, let's go back to bedroom. All right. So to draw a lamp here, I will just use the circle command. I'll type C and click enter. And then from here, I will just touch the perimeter of this polyline. And that would give us the center of this polyline. And now I can click on it and now choose the radius. I'll choose, let's choose four. And then I will, I will do an offset maybe by two inches and then offset the circle to the inside. And then I will add two lines like this just to represent a lamp. Okay, and now that we have this, now I can select all of them 
and then I can mirror them. I can mirror the nightstand and the lamp based on the bed to the bottom. And then AutoCAD will ask if I want to get rid of the original. I will say no. And now we have this bedroom ready. And the same, I can literally select everything that we did in this bedroom and then mirror it to the other bedroom. Since this is symmetrical, I can just do from the middle here. And here we go. Now we have the furniture for both bedrooms. Okay, and now we can move to the bathroom. Now for the bathroom, I will switch our layer again. Let's go to the layers tab here. And then I will switch here to, I'll click on the list from the top. And I'll switch to fixtures since I'm going to be uh, putting fixtures in the, in the uh, bathroom. All right, and now let's go back, switch back to the locks libraries. And then from here, I'll switch the library to another one. Let's choose, uh, let's choose fixtures. And then from here first, let's put uh, a tub. So I'm gonna choose the plan. I'm gonna right click and choose insert in drawing. And then I'll just drop it anywhere. And then I'll select it. I'll right click on it. I'm sorry, I'm gonna rotate it and let's start the rotate. Click on the corner. Let's rotate it from this corner actually. Then go down and then I will move it with the move command from this corner to this corner. Now, this uh, this tub is also actually a dynamic block, so I can select it. And then from here, I can click on this controller and switch it to make it uh, as, wide, uh, as wide as the bathroom. All right, so now we have that. Now let's go up and look at something else. Don't have a toilet seat in this collection because I didn't make one in the library. So, oh, because the AutoCAD one has a toilet seat block. So let's switch to Architectural Imperial. And then here we go. We will right click on this one and choose Insert in Drawing. Now this one, obviously it's an elevation, a front elevation of a toilet seat. But again, uh, this one is a dynamic block as well. So I'll click on this. Now it will show me the plan. And here we go. Now we have the plan. And I think this controller will do rotation. Yes. Well, so now I can move it. Uh, let's move it for now to here. Okay, then let's go back to layers and I'm gonna switch to uh, to the casework. Where is the casework layer? There's casework, but this layer is wrong. It shouldn't be here. Uh, there's another one that should be here. CW, maybe I didn't name it properly. Let me double check here. CW. Okay, so I guess this one has a different name. I'll just rename it. And then here say CW. Okay, so that's that's for casework pretty much. Okay, and then now let's locate it and let's to make it current. I'll select on the list here and choose this. All right, and the reason I'm switching to casework is because now I want to put the vanity base here. So I'll use polyline. I'll click here. Let's do this uh, three feet wide. And then let's do 24. That's typical. Then click here, click here, and click return. And now let's switch back to the fixture layer. And now let's insert a sink. So let's go to the blocks. Let's go to the libraries and switch to the... Uh, bathroom, not bathroom, to the fixtures library. And then from here, let's choose a single sink. I'll choose insert in drawing. Then I'll just place it literally anywhere. And then I'll select it, rotate it from here to here. And then select it and move it to the center of the back. And then move it a little bit away. Let's do maybe just two inches. Actually, let's do one more inch. Okay, I think this, this looks pretty realistic. And then the bathroom, let's move it. Let's see here. I don't know how much we have left. Uh, I don't know how much distance we have. Let's do inquiry. So let's go up to tools, then inquiry distance. Let's do from this point to this point. We have three feet. So this one we can, so this one we can actually move it from here to here, and then move it to the right 
by if we want to put it exactly in the middle i will do one foot six inches which is half of three feet okay so that was the bathroom now for the living room let's go back to the layers and let's switch back to furniture okay and then let's start here with let's see let's add a let's add a tv stand here and a tv and then we will add a couple sofas here and maybe a coffee table so first let's do the tv stand i'll click here and then let's do maybe 18 inches i think it's good okay and then reference this corner come here and then to this point and back to this point and click return to finish polyline and now let's insert the tv i'll go back to the uh, blocks tab the libraries and then from here i will switch to i think it's under equipment the tv okay and uh, this one has a lot of kitchen uh, kitchen equipment so we will use that a little later but for now i'm trying to locate the tv that i have here here we go this one uh, furniture tv plan so i'll right click on that one and choose insert in drawing and here we go uh, and then let's place it let's just place it somewhere in the middle here and then let's select it then let's rotate it so that way it's facing the wall and then i'll move it i can click on this point and then that will drag it pretty much to the back and then i'll offset it from the wall uh, not offset it uh, literally using the command just moving it one inch or let's do two inch away from the wall all right but this tv is pretty small and this block luckily is dynamic as well um, i already created in it like all the common tv sizes so let's choose something i don't know let's do 70 feet inches 70 inches sorry right so that's that's there and now we can add let's add a sofa so here let's switch to sofas and let's see here what we have so i want to bring a double one i think this one is good yeah this i want to use this one so insert in drawing and i will drop it i'll reference the middle i want it to be in the middle of the tv so that's why i'm referencing here uh, i'll just drop it for now and then i will insert like a single one i think this one is the same style so let's insert in the drawing here we go this one i'll drop it anywhere and now the sofa let's move it uh, let's move it back back to the other wall and then let's rotate it from the middle here and then i will move it back to meet the wall I missed the wall, so I'll move it back to here. And then I'll offset it or move it a little bit away from the wall, maybe three inches. Right? And then this one, I will rotate it so that way it's uh, facing uh, the upper wall. Then I'll move it, uh, for example, I don't know, from here to this point. And then I'll move it to the left. Let's say, let's see here. Let's do 34 inches. And then I'll move it down a little bit, maybe six inches, just to make a little bit of room, All right? And then for a coffee table, we don't need to use a block for that. It's pretty simple to draw it. We'll just do a polyline. Let's do uh, three feet maybe, and then here let's do let's do fifty-two inches. Then reference the other point, a little too big, but I think it's fine. Then I will move it close to the sofa. To the middle point and then move it away move it away by let's see let's do let's do 14 inches or let's do 15 inches i think this is pretty good right so now we have all of these guys here i can add a lamp here for example on this corner let's copy this what we created originally in the bedroom and then move it to there okay and click return right maybe this is a little too small let's make let's draw a circle under it so let's do a circle that represent the table let's do eight inches radius so that would be total 16 and then let's move these guys from the center to the center of the circle now to see the center of a circle you want to touch the circle first the the perimeter and that will give you the center point and now we can snap to it and then move this back to to here all right 
So that was regarding the living room. Now let's look at the, uh, the kitchen. So for the kitchen, I will switch first our layer. Uh, actually, let's switch to the layers here. And then let's switch our current layer to casework since I'm going to be adding uh, cabinetry here and base cabinet. So let's do a polyline. And then what I had planned originally in mind is to put a sink on this window. And I'm thinking of putting an island over on this side. And we will put the range and then the fridge on this corner. So let's see. I'll just do a general outline and then we will trim it and adjust it as necessary. So I'll start from this corner and I'll go to the left. So let's see. Up to here, AutoCAD is saying this is going to be 8 feet if I click here. But I will use the, I will type the dimension. I will say give me 8 feet to here. Right. And then uh, let's give the thickness of 24. And then the thickness on the other side will be also 24 inches or 2 feet. So this, let's do 6 feet here. And then going upwards, let's do, let's do just 6 feet for now. Okay, and then click on back on this point and then close it back to here. All right, so now we have, we have this, uh, basically think of this as like the base cabinets. Think of this as a countertop uh, to be exact. And under it, there's base cabinets. So let's add the sink here. I'll switch to the blocks and go to the libraries. And then let's switch there to uh, the fixture library. Okay, and let's use a double sink. So I'll right click on this one and I'll choose insert in drawing. Okay, so this one I will reference the window in the middle here. And then I will rotate it. And then I will move it one inch away from the wall. I'll click from here, give a direction upwards and type one. Okay, maybe, maybe another half inch. I will type 0.5 and AutoCAD will understand this as 0 0.5 inches. Okay, I think this looks much better. And then here, this one, we just want to make sure that it's on the right layer. So I'll switch back to here and I will tell this sink to be on the layer uh, fixture. Perfect. And now we want to place some of the equipment. So let's put a dishwasher first on the left side of this sink. So for that, I'll switch our layer to equipment. And then let's go back to blocks. And I think I have it under equipment. Let's switch back to that. So here, dishwasher. Here we go. This is the one. Right click and choose insert in drawing. Okay, and I'll drop it somewhere. And then I will rotate it. So that way it's in the right direction, like this. And then I'll place it uh, beside the, uh, the sink. Okay, and it doesn't look like it's going to fit. So what I will do, I'll stretch the uh, countertop. I'll click here and stretch it to the left. Let's do another, let's do another eight inches. Okay, and then let's move this maybe also eight inches or let's see. Looks like AutoCAD saying, telling us that if I click here, it will be fi about five inches. Let's just do four. Okay, I think this looks uh, pretty good for now. Okay, so now we have the dishwasher. Now let's add the range pretty much. Okay, or the stove. So first I'll mark it. I will do a polyline here just to mark where it is. I will reference this point two feet away. Okay. And I want it to be like to start here uh, and go from to go to here, and then we will have some more uh, cabinetry or uh, countertop. So I'll tell this line to come back here, and then this line I'll select it, the reference line we drew, and delete. Then from here, let's go down and find this range, and we will put a hood on top of it as well. Let's use oh, this is the front. It's not gonna work. This is for an elevation. This one is for a floor plan, so we will right click and choose insert in drawing. Okay, and I'll drop it somewhere and then I will rotate it. So that way it's in the right direction and then move it. From here to here and then just a little bit move it like maybe just one inch. I think this is pretty, pretty good. And then let's switch back to layers, switch our layer to casework. I will add another countertop part over here 
Uh, let's start from here, one inch away from the range, and then let's do two feet, and then two feet, and then close it back. And now let's add the fridge. It looks like we don't have enough room for the fridge. So what I will do, let's make this a little shorter. Let's make it six inches shorter. And then now let's switch our layer to back to equipment. And then uh, let's go back to blocks. Obviously you can do all of this like on the same layer and adjust them afterwards. So uh, it's really okay if you do that. It's up to you if you'd like to keep switching layers the way I am working, or you can draw a, a majority of stuff and then switch the layer. Okay, now let's find a refrigerator. So let's see here, I think this one is pretty good. Don't know how big it is, let me expand this. Want the smallest one. So these guys, if I wanna see their icons a little bigger, they are on large. I right click to see this list, so I think they're good. Uh, let's just choose this one and choose insert in drawing. Okay, and drop it somewhere. I can resize this a little bit, make it smaller, and then I will rotate it so it's facing the right direction, and then move it from the corner to the corner. So it's not going to fit, it's touching the window. So what I will do, I'll stretch this down, click on this point, and give it a direction down and choose six inches. And then I will choose the range, the new countertop and the fridge, and I'll move them down by six inches as well. Okay, and I think everything looks good. We can push the fridge one inch away. All right, so now we think we have everything for the most part. I'm just gonna add an island here. So I will go back to layers. I will switch to casework. And then here, let's do a polyline. And then let's do three feet away from, or maybe 30 inches away, just to give us enough room. And then here, let's do maybe, let's do four feet. And then here, let's go five feet. I think that's a pretty decent size island. Okay, and then close it back to here. All right. So now we have that, right? So that was about adding the furniture, the equipment, and the casework. I can add one more piece on this corner, but I think you get the idea on how to draw everything and switching their layers. At this point, our floor plan is ready now to print. And to print in AutoCAD, we do that using something called layouts. And you can see layouts here on the bottom bottom side of the interface. By default, AutoCAD has a layout one, and it has a layout two. Now, think of layouts as papers, pretty much. And, uh, and obviously, a paper has, uh, has a size, so we want to check first what's the size of this current paper. Okay, so to do that, I will right-click, and then from here, we're going to go to Edit Page Setup. And then from here, you can see that this paper size is eight and a half by 11 inches. And that's the letter size. However, what I want to do, I want to actually print the floor plan on a 36 by 24 inch paper, which is like kind of the standard for uh, both interior design and architecture construction documents. All right. So to change the paper size, obviously we can click from here and change it. But before we do that, we need to switch to print the printer over here on the top. The first step we need to do is switching this to tell AutoCAD that we want to print to a PDF. Now on the Mac, uh, the AutoCAD for Mac, literally the only option is to print to PDF here, or at least on my end. So I'm going to choose this particular one, DWG to PDF. And after we change that here, I'm going to expand this list and I'm going to choose specifically an option called Arc full bleed D. Okay, and it's here's the size 36 by 24. And the reason I'm using this particular one is that because here, I'll just click cancel. See right here, this dashed line that we're seeing on the perimeter of this, of this paper, this is basically like the printing limit. So anything beyond this line, this dashed line, uh, or this dashed rectangle will not print. However, the 
the full bleed papers, they allow you to fully like see this paper uh, as the printing area. And it just makes it easier in my opinion. So that's why I will go ahead, go back to uh, right click here, do edit page setup, and then switch the printer here again to the DWG to PDF. Do this first. And then here, second, choose the paper size. We're going to go with ARC, full bleed B. And then from the bottom, what I want to do where it says plot style, I just want to tell it that I want to print everything in black and white. So we will choose monochrome. Okay, so one, two, and three. That's what we're going to choose. And then we're going to hit OK. No need to change anything else. Now you can see when we change the size, the paper adjusted and it grew. And now we can proceed to the next step. The next step is to add a title block to our layout. So a title block is essentially the information box where we mention the project information or include project information and the layout or the paper itself information. Let me show you an example of a title block. I'll head to this file here and I will look at one of the title blocks here. Okay, so let's look at the title block here. So in general, usually there's text on the right side uh, or on the bottom or on the bottom side. Uh, and it also has like a, a border and inside this border is where we would put the different drawings pretty much and reference the model space. Now let's zoom in and look at this one. Usually it's kind of standard to have the firm or the designer's contact info on the top of the sheet. And usually we would mention information such as who designed the drawings, who did the drawings. Uh, usually you can add a signature box, revision, uh, if there's revisions to drawings. And then you want to mention what's the scope of the work or what's the project information. Now going down, I'll show you what else is included in this particular title block. Uh, there's also the project address, the date, and then the sheet title. Then under it here, if you want to mention the scale, you can mention it here. Uh, I usually just say as noted. And then on the bottom, we would include the sheet number. All right, so that's the kind of information like a generic title block would have. And again, there's so many different uh, uh, formats and designs for title blocks. Usually every designer, engineer, or architect have their own. Uh, but for this particular one, uh, this is the one that I personally use. Okay. One more thing to mention about title blocks is that the title blocks, they have to uh, basically match the paper size. So this particular one is for 48 by 36. There's 42, uh, 40 by 32 inches, uh, and then 36 by 24. And then I have here one for 17 by 11. Now, the one we will be using is this exact one, 36 by 24. And that's because it matched the, pay, the, the paper or the layout we set up earlier. And just to let you know, I will actually include this exact title block uh, uh, in the description below the video so that way you can download it and use it for free for in your projects and drawings all right so, so that's that let's switch back to our drawing now here what we want to do let's let's ins let's actually insert the title block so to insert it i will do it from the blocks libraries i'll go here to blocks then libraries and then I will switch to a library I added here. It's called JC Title Blocks with all the different title blocks. And then I will use the one that matches our project. I will choose Insert in Drawing. Okay. And then here uh, to insert it, I want it to be exactly on the bottom left corner here of this uh, of this layout. And to do that, what we can do is type zero, comma, zero. And basically, that's the coordinates of the corner on the bottom uh, left corner. And once I clicked return, you can see now AutoCAD is showing us this window with this uh, with these questions pretty much. And what that what what is this pretty much? This is called attributes, uh, and it's a feature in AutoCAD that allows us to fill in information inside a block. So I already included this uh, this feature in this title block. Uh, where you can actually, when you insert it in your drawing, you'll be able to immediately adjust it, adjust what's inside the block to
to match your information. Uh, so here I will just put J and then here J and then scope of work, uh, uh, floor plan example. Okay, and then here project address. I think I can expand it. It's not showing all the attributes, but there's more. Here project address, I will just say Los, Los Angeles. And I'll just hit confirm. Okay, and now it's inserted in the drawing. Right, but here you can see the color for it is a blue. We need to switch the layer for the title block. So let's go back to layers and then let's select the block, the title block, and then from here switch the layer to title block. It's always better to have its own block, pretty, uh, its own layer pretty much. Okay, now this one, the 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 attributes for this title block, I showed you that it allowed us to automatically fill in this information. And if you want to adjust this information, you can select it again, and then you can do text, edit, and then we'll open the window again. Now earlier, it should have opened uh, this entire window, uh, but for some reason it didn't. But anyway, we can adjust it afterwards. And then here we can add some more information. I put here Los Angeles, and then here I will say, California, United States. Okay, and then the date, whatever the date is, 6, 23, 2020. And then the sheet title, I will call it, this is a floor plan. And the scale as noted, I'll actually switch it to say quarter inch scale, because that's what I'm gonna use it for. And then the sheet number, this will be ID, uh, let's say 0 point or 1.00, and then hit OK. Okay, and you can see, now let's check on the title block to see if it uploaded or updated all the information. Here we go. It added all the information and filled it in as we did. Minus the designer information, this is something you need to do on your own in update. All right, so now we're ready to keep going to the next step. Now we will fix basically the layout to show the floor plan that we had on the model space to show it properly and to scale. So back to the layout here. Uh, there's this element that we saw earlier, this rectangle. I didn't talk about it yet, but now we're ready to talk about it. Let me show you based on layout two. So when you look at a layout, usually by default, it has this rectangle. And this rectangle is showing us a portion of the model space. Uh, this element is called a viewport, and a viewport is basically a window inside the model space. It shows us a portion of the model space on the paper. And this viewport, or this window, we basically tell it to show us the model space using a certain scale. So let's do that on the layout that we've set up already. So let's see, let's select it here. I'll select this viewport, and then I will adjust it to be big, like this, right here, I'll click somewhere. Now, we want this floor plan that we're seeing here on the bottom, on the bottom corner, we want it to be kind of centered and big and fit the paper and basically use an exact scale. So to do that, we will need to activate this viewport. We, we, we need to go inside it and then kind of move around and put this floor plan in here. So. To activate a viewport, we will double click inside it. Okay, so now that I double clicked inside it and you see the border is highlighted, that means it's active. Now I am technically accessing the model space. And then what I can do, I can hold the, uh, hold the screen, do the pan movement, and then kind of zoom in to the floor plan. And then uh, to zoom properly or basically to assign a scale when we will do that from the bottom right corner of the interface. And that's from here. See these numbers right here? If you click on it, it will show us a scale list. And from here, I will use, I will choose quarter inch scale. This is the scale I wanna use for this viewport. Okay, and now this is good to go. I like how it is. I will, I will deactivate the viewport to go back to the paper. And to deactivate the viewport, I will double click outside the border. Okay, and now we have this viewport over here in place. And then I will just select the viewport element itself, and I will move, uh, I will move it to 
a layer called dev points. And the reason why I want to do that is because I don't want the border of this to be printed. And the dev points layer is a layer, is a special kind of the layer that doesn't print. So, uh, so I will just select the viewport, select it, and then here let's switch it to dev points. I don't know why I have a duplicate one here, but usually you would see this one called dev points. That's the one you want to choose. Okay. So now that's that's that. I want to show you. Uh, I want to just mention one last thing before we head to printing this. Uh, is that if you want to insert a viewport, let's look at the layout too. That way we don't miss the one we already set up. Let's say you deleted this viewport by mistake and you want to bring it back in. I click delete just to get uh, rid of it for now. What you can do to bring back a viewport or to put a new one, you can go to view and then to viewports and then from here say or select one viewport and then you can draw a rectangle and boom, you will get a viewport that shows you uh, that shows you pretty much the model space, right? So now let's go back to layout one, and now we are ready to do the printing. To print in AutoCAD, all you need to do is click on one button. This button is right here, the plot button, or you can just type print or plot on the keyboard and then hit the return button. And that will open this window for us, the printing window. Now, from here, we don't need to change anything. We already did all these settings when we did the page setup for the layout earlier. And then from here, we will just go ahead and click plot. Then AutoCAD will ask us where to save it. I'm just going to say save as uh, test for now and just click save. All right. Now, I'm going to go back to, I'm going to check uh, what's the result here. Here's Finder, okay, and here's the test, here's the file, double click on it to open it, and here we go, here's the final result. Now here, I just realized I forgot to add one element for our printing, and that's basically the hatch on the wall. So let's go back to our model space and do that, and then we'll come back to, we will come back to our printing pretty much. Okay, but you see everything is in here. With all the information, everything looks clear. I think everything looks good. But now let's go back to AutoCAD and do the do add the hatches pretty much. So let's go to model space. And then from here, let's change the layer to hatch. Okay. And the hatch command, you can access it by clicking on this button right here. Or we can type H and then click return. And then from here, what we want to do, I will click here to switch the kind of hatch I want to use. I want to use a solid for the walls. And then what I will do, I can just click inside the, uh, the wall and the hatch command, the way it works, it will fill in this area. So here we go. It's filling in this area. Uh, let me zoom out to see the entire world. Click here, click here, and then I can keep on clicking. To add all the different walls pretty much we have a small part here another one here one more here here and i'll click enter to finish the command all right so now this is this is good to go now let's go back to layout and let's do another print and then let's click plot and then let's choose test 2 save then i'll go back now to the folder then here double click and see how it looks like and here we go this is the result now let's go back to autocad so uh, regarding the printing there's more information about the printing of course uh uh, there's printing from several pages and including uh, including multiple viewports on the same sheet and even printing from multiple CAD drawings. For all of that, if you want to learn more about the printing, I actually made a course that will teach you everything you need to know about printing in AutoCAD. And I will leave you the link in the description. I just realized that 
we didn't turn on the text layer back on so i'll just go ahead and click on that uh, on the layer list i'll just click on unfreeze and then i would do the print again so uh, you like just double check your layers before you print that everything that everything you want visible to be on pretty much all right so that's about that and the last thing i want to mention to you is basically the template in AutoCAD or the template file. If you remember in the very beginning when we did or started this drawing and opened AutoCAD, uh, AutoCAD asked us which template we want to use. And it looked something like this. It showed us this list. I click here on new drawing. And then we got this list where AutoCAD asked us which template we want to choose. And we chose ACAD LT. Okay. Now we can do our own template in AutoCAD. And usually what people save in a template file, you would save all the settings that you change uh, that you change and that you need to work in the drawing pretty much. For example, uh, what we did here, one of the first things we changed was uh, adjusting the units from the units uh, window. Then after we did the walls, doors, and windows, we brought in the layers and we started working based uh, or using layers pretty much. Everything we did was on a specific layer. After that, we moved to, uh, after that we brought in the text style so we could put the room names. And then afterwards we brought in the dimension style so we can use the dimensions on the drawing, All right? And once we were done here with the model space or the drawing area, we moved to the layout. And the first thing we did, we adjusted the layout page size. Or the paper size and after we did that we brought in uh, a title block and we put in all the information so all of these different settings and all of these different uh, uh, elements that we brought in we can have all of them saved in a template file for example i will show you this template file right here that i created and what i included here i pretty much created all the major uh, we looked at something similar to this before uh, earlier when we were looking at the when we were talking about the title block so here you saw that i had all the different title blocks using different paper sizes set up for the layouts and also here what i did as well i added all the layers that we used i also added the text styles i added the dimension styles and i also added something that we didn't use when we were drawing this floor plan it's basically later styles and I did them the same way I did with the with the dimensions and with the text styles. I also mention here uh, which which leader, uh, like what's the scale for each leader, which one you should use. And I'm also including this collection of blocks that you can use in your project as well. So I'm bundling all of this and I'm putting this template. Uh, I will put a, a link for you in the description so you can see where you can get it. Now, the way to work with this template or any other uh, AutoCAD template pretty much, if you want to make your own or if you are using uh, a firm's or a company's uh, template, I recommend moving that template into the AutoCAD template folder. And then from there, when you have that in there, and you choose to create a new drawing. Now you will see it here and then you can select the file, template file, and then you choose open. Just a quick note, you will just for you to know that the extension of a template file in AutoCAD is called DWT, while the AutoCAD files are usually DWG, that's their extension, right? And I'm going to hit open here. And what AutoCAD did right now, it essentially created a new drawing with all the information already in there. Uh, this is all in here. You see all the layers. And then you see all the layouts and if you choose to create another new drawing based on the template you just go to file new drawing and again you choose the template every time you create a project and it already has all the information and you can see here i already created multiple drawings using the same template so this was everything i wanted to show you about autocad if you like this video Subscribe to my channel to get my weekly tutorials on AutoCAD. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment. See you in the next project.